What is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We have got an awesome, awesome show for you today. We've got a couple of great guests with us, and uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things today. We're going to talk about specifically, uh, we're going to talk about how to network your way to success. We're going to talk about some of the Facebook algorithm changes and how they affect what we're doing. We've got Gene Volpe here, who's going to share a social media and or tech tip, and he might hang out with us for a little bit beyond that. So we've got a bunch of stuff to get to, a couple of great guests to bring on. So first of all, the junior grandmaster himself is in the house, the co-pilot seat where he so belongs, Greg McDaniel. Greg, what's up today? What up, Johnson? Dude, it is Friday. I'm looking good. Um, I actually dressed up for this event, and I, I'm playing with my new mic today. I'm playing with my ATR 2500. Matt, you, you roll with an ATR 2500, and you know, I got to tell you, I was watching... Um, the social media examiner's live video today in regards to what the algorithm changes are uh, and how they're going to be rolling out in the in the coming months. Um, and if you guys, they're, they're, they specifically spoke to and about real estate agents and lenders and and when how to you you guys are going to need we all have to move into long form content, long form comments. It can't be like, hey, where's the best place to get sushi in San Francisco? That's a short comment. It's going to be buried down. All these short videos, all these memes, all these, you know, all these things that you see that are flashed in the pan kind of information is going to be either eliminated or pushed down in the newsfeed where nobody's going to see it. So, I mean, go to, go to Social Media Examiner, guys. It's where I and Gene and probably a lot of other people go is our go-to for social media. Um, and that's why I think it's so incredible that we're all here today talking about networking uh, with Steven and with Nick, the guys, the, the, the founders of Rockstar Connect, the thing that I talk about all the time about how I'm out there networking, because I think we, we as a human species need to learn how to have more powerful conversations and not just go for the clicks and for the likes. We've got to be more social and interact with each other on a human-based level. And I think our business is run that way as well. And that's where we're going to get a like, you know, 36 to life with Hank is, teaches that Rockstar Connect, you know, puts people with people. So I think that this is going to be a really good conversation. If you guys don't have, don't watch this live, share this out on your page, push this out, you know, give us some comments, give us your feedback, guys. We want to know what you're thinking about this because we're really excited about this show. Okay. All right. Well, first of all, Steve, Nick, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Matt. Yeah. Glad to be here. Great to be here. Thanks, guys. Cool. Our pleasure. And then we've got Gene Volpe, the evil bald ninja, the Volpinator himself. Gene, what's up today? What's up, guys? This is a little weird for me because usually I'm the fourth wheel. Today I'm the fifth. That's right. <laughs> You've graduated. <laughs> We're almost. No, I went down. I went the other one. You went down. Yeah, I was going to say, you went, you went down. <laughs> the fifth wheel can really screw things up, so you get that at least. <laughs> All right. True, so first true. of all, Steve, what's uh, what's your perspective on it? We were talking about this a little bit before we uh, we went live, and I thought you've got a really great kind of perspective on it. So why don't you share that with everyone? Well, I, I don't feel that uh, the sky is falling. Uh, there's people that are posting on Facebook. Get off Facebook now. Leave Facebook. Your posts are not going to be seen. That's fine. Let's keep it a secret. A lot of you get off Facebook. We're going to keep on posting on Facebook. <laughs> But we're going to provide more content. We're going to provide more value, just like we do in our real estate businesses. It's not enough to just put a house uh, in the MLS and sell it. It's not enough just to put a line of content on Facebook and assume that you're going to be able to get engagement. Yeah, your engagement is the biggest thing. I mean, being a human, acting as a human, having a conversation as a human, um, I think is we lost our way for a while because we got caught, caught up by the easy things, the shiny objects. I think now we're going to go back to the basics and really have to develop the conversational skills, ask good, strong questions, be interested in other people, um, help other people build their businesses, and then the reciprocity will come back and help let help us build ours. It's going to be interesting. It's just going to be interesting. I agree with you, Stephen, on that one. And my perspective uh, is that, uh, you know, they're giving us the tools to make it easy to provide that extra content and that conversation. You know, I guess we're just going to all have to start shaving earlier in the day and put on a nice shirt so we can do go live when uh, when no. it's when it strikes us. Yeah, you may have to shave occasionally. No yeah. shaving in this podcast, sir. Nice shirts. <laughs> oh, hygiene? Don't say it's true. Well, my Matt, wife said 
your Howard it's... Hughes status is revoked. You you no, no longer peeing in bottles for you. Because it's not smell a vision. You know, you go live. The shower isn't as important as neat hair and a shave. <laughs> well, just just think about it. I mean, you really only have to be put together from about shoulder Reason. up. Like everything else can like like you can let yourself go. Like you can stop working out. Like nobody cares as long as uh, yeah. you know. What I'm saying? My grandfather was was a judge in Miami, Florida, and it was really hot there. And uh, it, the rumor was that he used to wear nothing underneath his robes when he was sitting on his <laughs> camera. <laughs> well, that's what I was saying to him. I was going to say, here, how do you guys know I'm wearing pants? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's we should all key. stand up and show it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. That's blinding factors. People's eyeballs would be seared. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, Gene, Gene you, you keep track of this, too, this uh, this whole algorithm change and, and all this good stuff with Facebook. So what's your perspective on it? Uh, we, you know, we've been talking about it, video, video, video. Uh, I, I want to – the last last week we jumped into it a little bit, and I think I, I've been thinking a little bit more about it. And you know, I think it's become more important than ever to grow a team of people that uh, that are influential and that would be happy to help. And what I mean by that is, it's time that you put an ask out there to your friends. Like, hey, we talked about this last week. Greg, Matt, um, you know, you guys are friends of mine. I would love it if you would go and click my page to make it more relevant. And by the way, anytime I get into a, some kind of uh, big deal engagement conversation. I would love for you guys to participate and I'll return the favors. So that, you know, when you have your army of people around that, you know, you know how it is now, there's always that one guy or two guys that always jump in and, and engage and start the interaction and the communication yeah. in your feed. You yep. just need more of those people. So video, 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 and you know, you got to play the part too. If you want people to do that for you, you got to kind of give back. And I noticed fr from my perspective, typically the ones that interact the most on mine are the ones that I interact the most on. It's almost like a return mm -hmm. the favor type stuff. So be sense. selective about the people you run in circles with and have them start trouble on your feed and go from there. Yeah. So you what you're saying, Gene, I, what I hear you saying is that I need to hire a team of VAs to log into my Facebook account and engage with other people's videos like yours. <laughs> that's that's what I'm hearing. That I'm sure hack. Facebook listening right now is saying, yeah, go ahead and do that and we'll yeah, squash exactly. you like a bug. But mm -hmm. yeah, more or less. <laughs> Well, well, they're not going to see that, uh, that all the logins to my Facebook account from Manila and Bangladesh are, aren't. I, oh, that's what? I travel a lot. What? <laughs> Facebook old. knows you have your top button unbuttoned right now. I'm pretty sure they'll know when people are logging in from Bangladesh. <laughs> it's actually the top two. Thank you, Gene. Top two. Nicely done. <laughs> Me with no pants and Matt taking his shirt off. This, is, this show is going downhill. That's right. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Or uphill, depending on your perspective. <laughs> all right, so we've got a lot of people watching. First of all, thank you guys for watching and uh, for all the comments that you guys are starting right now. Uh, Steve says, I'm one of those people. Thank you. Uh, we've got a bunch of people watching, so we appreciate it, guys. Let us know kind of what your what your questions are on networking, because we've got a couple of guys that basically uh, have started one of, the, one of the best companies that we've ever come across, especially for in-person networking. We all know what it's like to kind of walk into a networking situation, not know exactly what to do or what we're supposed to get out of it and what the format is and all that stuff. So guys, if you've been in that position, you're looking for some tips and tools and tactics on how to get better at networking, how to uh, follow up with the people that you meet at networking events. Uh, stay tuned and make sure that you put your questions in the Facebook comments. But uh, uh, Gene, or Greg, I want to go back to you. Um, this right, is my feeling on the whole Facebook stuff, right? Which is like all these, essentially we've been, we've been spending the last however many years Facebook has been around, bending over backwards, trying to figure out how to get Facebook to do us a favor and put us in front of more people for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than we can out in the real world, right? That's what all of this is about. Yeah, it is. When it really, is. really what Facebook is, and they, they keep getting smarter about it, and Google is the same way with your website, you know, SEO. They keep getting smarter in the sense that they're really just catching up to how do people actually perceive you in the real world. Mm -hmm. They want human right. interaction. They, they, they don't want it to be, you, they don't want to hide, have you hide behind masks or filters. Yes, we do that in Messenger. We do that in Snapchat for fun and Instagram and everything else. But they are a global community. They want to have, you know, interactions like you are in a community. And that's where you can do digital, Facebook, all, so all the old social media platforms. But you can also do the networking, the human-based networking. You know, when the Grandmaster, the T. Diddy, um, you know, when he started doing, you know, real estate, there was no live video. There was no anything. Shit, I don't think there were computers. Basic, bare bones computers, if, if that. Um, and so what did he do for real estate? He networked. He went out and met people. He went and did door knocking. You know what? He went out to someone else he didn't know and said, hi, I'm Terry. What's your name? What's your name? 
Hmm. And that's the unique thing that we're going to talk about today with, you know, Stephen and with Nick uh, about how what they're doing, because, you know, Stephen is a licensed real estate agent. And Stephen gave me a hilarious analogy why he started this networking. And I'm not sure if he's going to share that or not. That's his discretion. But you know what? He's, he, he's, a, he's a genius for why he did it. And now it's spreading like a weed all over, you know, the, the, the nation, you know, Rockstar Connect is growing like it's like there's no tomorrow. And it's because they take the difficult out of networking events. Guys, we all talk about, we got to throw parties, we got to throw events, we got to do a networking thing, we got to get, we should get together and get beer. We never fucking do it because we're so caught up in our buyers and our sellers and, you know, our CRMs and our databases and our lives and our wives and our dogs and our pets and our goldfishes. In Matt's case, it's three obese little wood denting insulin sucking babies. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But you know, Stephen, why did you start this? Why did you and Nick get together? Give us, give us the history here, so that people get this. Like, because I, I chabber on like a drunk monkey on a, on the on the limb, you know, because I like what you guys do. But hearing it from the horse's mouth is a totally different, totally different game. Yeah, well, well, I started. I've worked for myself. I'm very blessed since I'm 21 years of age. I'm 152 now, so <laughs> you do the math. It's been a very long time. And what I found in business was whenever I would chase after business and try to promote my business, guess what happened? People ran away in droves. Mm -hmm. Yet when I would create an ecosystem where I was helping other people doing for them, whether it be a networking event or uh, an art festival or a music series, people would reward me for doing things for them. It didn't make a difference whatever product what I was in and whatever business I was in. That is why they sought me out because they saw me as a giver and a connector and a helper and a leader in, in their community. Now, my grandfather was the inspiration for me starting this program, and he was an unselfish guy. He was the type of guy, you know, they didn't have Facebook. They didn't have computers. They didn't have the Internet. And, you know, he was a seven-figure earner because he was unselfish. He treated everyone with respect, whether they were a billionaire and he had clients that were billionaires or whether they were a truck driver. So I had the idea for this event. I sold my existing businesses and I got a real estate license in order to pilot and demonstrate the event. Okay. Now, yep. the networking event was the most, to me, I felt like I had an obligation to teach people how to get utilize social media to create their event, but then step off of you know the fake world of social media. And oftentimes it's not sincere and it is fake, and that's why Facebook is stepping on top of all of us, to be honest, you know, with our clientele. And we're stepping off of the internet and going into these live networking events where we are creating a sphere of influence of people that see us as that essential leader that they want to do business with. Hmm. That's really good advice. You know that a lot of people get, I get asked all the time, Greg, why do you do these networking events with, if other real estate agents come? Well, the reason why I encourage other real, real estate agents to come to these events, you know what? Because I'm the biggest, I'm the swinging dick in the room. I'm the, I'm the pimp daddy. Right. I'm the guy that, 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 that threw the, exactly. threw the event. And I've officially offended Matt, and I'm, what, we're 14 minutes in? Awesome. Wow. <laughs> I don't know about offended. I, I'm not offended. I'm just, it's just funny. Um, but, the, the you know, is, but that's the reason the, why. The key I mean, is cause... the king. It's nice to be the king. So mm -hmm. when I do my event, I, I want other agents to come to my event. First of all, it shows my strength and confidence in my business that these people are not my competition. They're my collaborators. Also, it's fantastic if you are trying to start a team, but also many markets in the country, you're in multiple offer situations all the time. And all things being equal, another real estate agent is going to push your offer to their client because they know you. They know your moral compass. They know that you're someone they can trust to get to settlement. Mm -hmm. So certainly you definitely want real estate agents to come to your event. You know, I'm extremely loyal to my lender. I've made him a very wealthy person. Uh, we're extremely happy with one another. He likes to meet other lenders. There are some products that he just doesn't sell. And keep in mind, you want to do business with the people you want to do business with. We're so used to Internet leads 
And let's face it, a lot of those leads guys, what are they? They're crap leads with people that you don't want to do business with. Mm -hmm. Life is too short. We're in real estate because we want to work for ourselves and have freedom and determine who we do business with. The best way to screen your referral partners and people that you're going to do business with, there's really only one way. It's to meet them in person. Yeah, the eyeball, the eyeball, the eyeball, belly to belly, human contact is, there's nothing can ever replace that. No digital product, no internet system, nothing will ever re replace the fact of meeting up, having a coffee, having a cocktail, having a bite to eat, just, just breaking bread together is really what it comes down to. Right, and what I'm trying to accomplish is I'm trying to accelerate the process of a deep referral relationship. People do business with people that they know and that they trust. It takes a long time in a traditional format, just going to one networking event after another to meet people, to get them to know you and trust you. Mm -hmm. When you have your own, well, I mean, I guess I would have to say, typically your networking experiences, you're going to a BNI, you're going to a chamber mixer, you're going to someone else's networking event. It's like going to the prom without a date. You feel really uncomfortable. You don't know who to dance with. You feel like a piece of crap, basically. You grab five business cards, you run out of the room, and you don't ever want to do it again. Now, Greg, you can tell me if you're if I'm wrong, but we sort of made you the homecoming king or the pretty <laughs> girl at the dance. Everybody wants to dance with you. I love that analogy. You don't have to taste that with everybody. Look at that pretty girl there. Oh, I better have a lavender dress if I'm the pretty girl. I got to tell you, I, my eyes pop with lavender. Yeah, and everybody wants and, and everybody wants to is coming up to you and they're asking you why you're doing this. Everything every real estate agent says, I love helping people and I do things for people. They do, but they get paid for those things. That's transactional. That's not going to point to your merit as a good person. Having a networking event where you're the economic engine for your community, where you're the altruistic person, where you're the benevolent person that wants to help other people elevates your status. Mm -hmm. That's your return on investment in networking. You are elevating your status. You know more people. Everybody wants to be well known. You're the popular kid in class. I wish I could go back, like sort of like back to the future to 1984, Stephen David Elliott trying to be popular in high school and say, hey, Stephen, I'm gonna create this event for you where you're gonna be the popular kid and you only have to pay me $350 a month. I get up at four o'clock in the morning and start selling newspapers. Who knows, <laughs> I may be selling myself at that point. <laughs> but we have, we have run into a program that is absolutely unique where we are positioning people in their market. And mind you, you have to be a successful person to be in this program. You have to be a good person. You know, you have to be willing to provide value to your network. We're going to make you into a superstar. We're just going to take all those great parts of your personality and we're going to display it to a whole new group, a whole new sphere. In addition to that, we're going to introduce your new network to your old network. That's a value proposition to the people you already do business with. Mm -hmm. And they're going to appreciate you and send you even more referrals. Yeah, I think it's really important for people to understand kind of the mentality that goes along with this and the people that are the most successful that get plugged into a, a program like yours or, and, and really just hosting any kind of event. It's that it takes that certain kind of and you hit the nail on the head. You have to be a good person. You have to be a successful person, and part of that is, and I, I always I like to equate it back to um, to Jay Abraham and the strategy of preeminence. Just that mentality of treating everyone as if they're already a client, already someone that's under your care and protection. And when you step into that mentality, getting put into an environment where you're the center of attention and you're hosting a place where people come together and talk and network and and make connections that'll build their businesses, like all those good feelings get associated with you. But it works exponentially so much better if you're the type of person that treats people when you do encounter them in person with that mentality. That way, when they run into you, when they're introduced, when they're referred, or when they connect with you at that event, they immediately get that sense of, oh, that's why this guy is doing this. He's that guy. He's a connector. He's an influencer. And he treats everybody as if they're already his clients. So Yes. It, it, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Greg. So one of the things that I experienced, I mean, when it comes down, I'll give a quick story about my, my first experience with you guys. 
<clears throat> Aaron Wittenstein called me at like six o'clock on a Saturday morning and, and he's like, McDaniel, I'm like, what do you want, Wittenstein? It's six AM. It's like, dude, you've got to get a you've got to get a hold of this company called Rockstar Connect. I'm like, I don't give a fuck what you want at six AM. Call me later. He's like, No. And he got really, like, really excited. Like Aaron when Aaron goes vertical, he went vertical on me at six AM. I'm like, All right, tell me about him. And so he gave me the lowdown on you. He said, Greg, literally after my first event, people were coming up and hugging me and thanking me for, for throwing the event. And I'm th sitting in my head, bullshit. You're so full of crap, Wittenstein. Well, fast forward. Uh, Nick flew out, um, and uh, he helped me set up my first event. Um, it went very, very well. We had about 70 people through the first event. Um, and I, what I was doing, uh, you know, being the connector, I just meet people and then have them go on in and then go in and mingle, then come back out, and, you know, meet more people, then go back in. And at, at the end of it, people literally came up to me and were hugging me and going, thank you so much for, for making this event happen. How come I've never heard of you before? And I wasn't going to tell them it was my first event. I'm like, well, I'm sure glad you found us today. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know what? I, I, uh, and, and people always ask me, well, do you get leads and business out of this? I say, yeah. My, you know, my first event, I had a gal, she's an investor, and she came up to me and she's like, hey, I want to buy four houses a month. I, they need to be off the market and they need to be, and it needs to be some meat on the bone. I'm an investor. I'm like, I can, yeah, dude. I can find, I can be a, you know, bird dog. I can go find stuff. And I've been, I've been pushing a lot of properties her direction. And as we've done the events more and more, we've changed locations three times where I think we're at a real winner of a, a, a location now. Nick just knocked it out of the park and just lined up a sweetheart of a location. Um, and people were just walking in to get a drink. I'd drag them into the event, you know, and I'm like, hey, you, come here, put a name tag on. You're coming in for free food. And, uh, yeah, and I, and I, gals. and I, hmm? oh, I was just going to say, I think that's one of the really unique takes you've had on your program is that with this new venue, you've really been able to, at the day of the event, you know, there's people in there that want to just check out what you're doing and you're just telling everyone, come on in, like join the networking event. And that's. I think a really powerful aspect of how you've built out your program so effectively in this new location. And I think it's going to really snowball into a huge thing in the coming months because of one of those main elements. So it really is. And you're talking about being the connector of the event, right? So when I would sit at the front, I mean, guys, they make it so bone numbingly simple to do an event. They literally, when I'm not talking, I'm going to grab the bag that they actually give you. Um, they give you name tags, pens, magic markers, sign-in sheets, a self-addressed self envelope. They give you a tablecloth. They give you a business card holders. If you, if you screw this up, we need to put pads in your room because you're going to be that dumb. Um, but, you know, what, what they do is that people will come in, and I, I will say, hey, Matt, Matt, what's your business? Oh, I'm, I, direct, I build podcasts. You know what? I think you need, that's Gene Volpe over there. He is in, he's a marketer. Maybe you guys could do some work. Then I'll walk Matt over to meet Gene. And I will do this throughout the network and I'll be the connector, putting people into where they need to be. A lot of the people that are repeats, um, every time they show up to my networking event, they pick up more clients <laughs> at the event. <laughs> it's, it, it's evolving into a beautiful you know, ecosystem and it, it, there's no legwork involved. That's what I love so much about this is there's no legwork involved. So much, we, like I said in the beginning, a lot of us have a good heart. We want to do them, but we just don't find time to them and we deprioritize them. And maybe some of the listeners are a little bit older and, you know, Facebook and the social media stuff is not their forte. So they don't really get the word out as much as possible. You know, they take care of all of that. Guys, it's, it's, it's stupid simple. And that's why, you know, that's why I want to talk about networking. And Matt, maybe you could take us down the path of, no, what's the importance? I mean, you're in a your, your podcast business is absolutely exploding. You took a lot of you did a lot of legwork, you know, up here in Northern California, doing you know networking with people at different events. Um, one of the people you met at, at one of our networking events, she is helping us put together uh, some back end uh, business stuff that you and I just couldn't have done, and you wouldn't we would not be where we are without meeting her. So I mean, what's give me a little bit idea about your networking experiences, given that you lock yourself in the basement with a bucket of water at nights because you're afraid of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you this. Um, every, everything good that's happened to me in the last three years has happened to me because of relationships and, for the most part, personal introductions from people to other people in their social network based on some level of trust and camaraderie and, and so forth. And as much as I love podcasting, and podcasting is amazing and it's fantastic and video conferencing helps – one of the things that really bonded people to me, I think, and that led to them eventually turning into clients or referring me 
was just meeting in person because there's something about just being able to get a sense like just sh like shaking somebody's hand and looking them in the eye. Um, there's something about that like just on a human level where we need that at some point. Um, I, w I would love to say that you'll never ever have to get on a plane as long as you do podcasts or as long as you do video conferencing and calls with your people. But ideally, like, and it does cut down a lot the amount of time that you need to to build like high level relationships with people. I mean, Greg, you and I have hung out together literally a handful of times in the same physical location, maybe more yeah. now since I spent some time up in the Bay Area last yeah. year. But we're talking about two and a half years into our partnership before we hung out in person more than five times. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's, but, it's honestly true. Everybody thought we were together all the time. And Matt and I are like, no, he's either in Omaha or he's in San Diego. Now right. he's firmly entrenched in San Diego. He's like an Alabama tick. I don't think he's ever coming out. No, I'm never, I'm never leaving San Diego. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you say. But, but the point being, like, uh, like everything the good that, it ha that has happened has all been relationship driven. And I think, like you said, Greg, earlier, and Hank you know, had to remind us of this too with our business, mm -hmm. just don't think of people in terms of transactions. Think of it in terms of relationships. And all the stuff that we're talking about with the Facebook algorithm versus in-person networking, in the end, it all comes down to the relationships and how many people feel like they have a relationship with you, right? Mm -hmm. So like the Rockstar Connect events and, and, and even like podcasting does this too, <clears throat> like it increases the number of people that you can reach to where they feel like they have a relationship with you. You don't necessarily need to always know them super, super well. You may not be able to get to know people really well if you're meeting 100 people or 150 people at an event. You're gonna have some time uh, to get to know them and then you need to follow up and we'll talk about that in a second. But what counts is that you're seen as the mover, the shaker, the influencer, and because they're there and they're having that experience, they feel like they're spending time with you, that they've gotten to know you a little bit better, even if you really only got a chance to just meet them and talk to them for like 60 seconds. Just that alone can make a huge difference. I mean, I can point to Greg Harrelson as a great example in my, my own life. Uh, I met with him. Like we, we knew who each other were, we have mutual friends, uh, and we ended up meeting in person at uh, an Infusionsoft event in Phoenix, um, phew, very, very briefly. Nothing came of it, you know, he was aware of the podcast business, yada, yada. Then I run into him again in, I think it was Tahoe, the Go Abundance event, and ended up hanging out with him and Jeff Cohen. We actually got time together. Now it wasn't all personal time, but we ended up hanging out for a couple of hours. Next thing you know, he's a client. Right, that kind of stuff, like that's the way it goes. As much as we had spent time together on video and had lots of trust and mutual friends and stuff like that, there's something about looking somebody in the eye and shaking their hand that makes all the difference. Yeah. You know, the thing is, Gene, I want to bring you in on this. Uh, Gene, he is the evil bald ninja for a reason because his his stuff, his proprietary you know software on the back end on, on the cloud is very good. But Gene, I see your wheels turning over there and I want to get your opinion on this as well and how you know what you do and what they do I, I know there's a blend I want to hear your thoughts well you guys said it all all I mean I think the video and what we do is a great way to make the introduction and and I think you know you two years ago without video it was harder to discern certain things about different people and you really needed to meet them in today's world by the time I meet you I already know enough about you so mm -hmm. at that point I, I, I you know, Greg, you're a rock star when you get into that, when you get into a space where you're face to face with people, they know you're the rock star. Now they just want to get a little more in your head. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, what we do leads to what, what you need to do, which is ultimately, if you want to do business, meaningful business over a long period of time, a lot of that stuff has to be face to face. I think, you know, in most cases, like your, your, your situation with Matt aside, I've had partners that, that have worked real well and we're far away, but it's just so much more personal when, when I'm in your space and there's things going on. I'm firing all my senses. We're, you know, there's there's just more things going on when you're face to face. There's just so much more to be done and be, be said, and more, the bonds grow quicker. I think so. What I do, I think, is important for sure to set the tone. But ultimately, it's all about. I'm I'm a networking guy at heart. That's that's how I started my business. That's how I grew it. Um, you know, I I think you. You know, there's a lot to be said about your eyes. It's hard to see into your soul when it's on video, but when I'm in front of you, I get a couple different senses. My, my, you know, my set, my smell kicks off. I can see physically what's behind those eyes. Are you really looking at me when we're talking to each other? You know, that says a lot about somebody too. When you're disengaged, when you when you lie to me, can I tell? You know, like there's a lot of things, and you need to be face to face for a lot of that stuff. So it's mm -hmm. funny. I tell my people uh, when I do my when I do my speaking engagements, I go, look, what I do gets the engagement brewing, right? 
But if you suck as a salesperson, I can't help you with that. So if you are a terrible human and you're just awkward, I can get you to the meeting, but you got to close that deal at the meeting. And, and that's the, the only way to do it is, is mano a mano, it's face to face. I mean, that's, that's end all be all. Yeah, that's really true. You know, Stephen and Nick, you guys have been having you guys. I mean, you guys have exploded lately on your on your on your business. Rob St. John is here. Uh, he's watching. He was one of your big biggest success stories. You know, walk us through what some of the other people are experiencing, not just me, what other clients of you are experiencing and not just them, but with the, the the attendees when they come into this. You know, when they leave, Nick, you were, I mean, you were a traveling ninja, dude. You were just on a plane 95% of your life in the last couple of years. And uh, he made a funny comment to me. He's like, oh, Greg, that's cute. You want to travel like two two weeks out of the month? That's funny. That's cute. I remember that. <laughs> I know. Nick, Nick is on the road or has been on the road something like 47 days a month. I don't know if it's, how that's mathematically possible. I think you're inventing days of the week to be gone. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're finally changing a little bit. But, yeah, no, to, to your point, uh, Greg, I think it's, you know, the people that are – really able to come to these events they they leave and they're or while while they're there they're like i i can't believe this is like there's free food it's a great atmosphere like people are not trying to sell me everything left and right it's like such a welcoming environment this is very unlike any other networking event i've been to and and that's really positive for us it means that we're really feeling good about the events we're delivering and and they're welcoming more people to bring friends next time and that's how we're seeing a lot of our events snowballing into larger numbers as a result of that so you know, just having a, a networking event different because of all those positive things and not having a salesy feel to it is, I think, the really big positive thing we've been trying to, to get in all of our events around the country. So let me ask you a question, Nick. Um, <clears throat> I, there was a question in our comments from a, from a gal. She was saying, like, you know, how, how do you how do you do networking events um, when the, when you have a broker that looks down on alcohol being at events, but she feels that alcohol it's kind of that lubricant that kind of makes everybody a little bit more easy around each other. You know, how, how, how would, how would you get around that in some of the, you know, more stringent counties and, and states? Yeah. As far as people not like wanting to buy alcohol at some of the events. Is that yeah. We're just not being at a, a location where there is alcohol or just how, 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 to, how would you, would you, format of an event like that? Have you done that? Oh, I'm well, that. at this point, we, we target bars and restaurants that do serve alcohol and soft drinks and, you know, all types of beverages and food because that's the best atmosphere for our events, uh, the social weeknight event on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, or Thursdays. It's, a, it's an evening event where you come after work, and we have national relationships with a number of, of large chain venues and companies that do lots of events at the different chains they own, uh, Craftworks being one of them, uh, Darden Restaurants and uh, World of Beer, Bar Louis, uh, you know, a number of those places. And the reason we do them at those places is because they're the most welcoming for the events we do. Mm -hmm. And so, and Stephen, you can add to that as well uh, if you want, as far as why we yeah, choose those places, but that's... Because we actually do, when we're, everyone wants this program, but when they do get on the phone, alcohol is a concern in some markets. Uh, when we are doing an event for someone where alcohol is a concern, we're not going to choose a place with bar in the name or beer. We're going to choose a venue that's more restaurant oriented. As far as the alcohol, our hosts do not provide the alcohol at the events. Mm -hmm. We encourage our hosts not to imbibe too much at their events. I used to, when I first started out and I was a novice, drink a few free glasses of vodka at my <laughs> event. Now I have club soda and a lime and a cocktail glass because I want to be aware of what's going on in the room and to be able to stake out opportunities. So for the person that has an issue with their broker, I would suggest you say to them, this is not a drinking event. It is not, it is not promoted as a drinking event. All alcoholic beverages are the choices of the people that come to the event. And that is not what this is about. It's about establishing relationships and friendships that will eventually lead to business. And as far as, you know, someone like Greg, Greg is a rock star. The people in our program are rock stars. They're the talent at the event. Nick and I, we're the roadies. We're making sure that things run smoothly. We're doing the jobs that you guys don't want to do. We're doing the stuff behind the lines, you know, 
that would take you 41 hours, 42 hours per month and is not fun. So we want you to go to the event and be yourself and honest. Don't put on a mask. Don't put on a filter like we said in Facebook. Interact with your audience that are coming to the event. Those are your attendees. We're going to put in front of you a thousand new people or so over a year in person. And we're going to put your name on social media in front of thousands of people mm -hmm. to show people what you are really like. If you're a stinker, you're not going to do well with this program. A lot of it, <laughs> right, a lot of it has Steven, to do I'll with you. you. That's awesome. And frankly, I'll get on a phone and, and talk to people, and I know five minutes in, I'm not going to let them be in this program <laughs> because they're not going to have success with it. They don't like people. They don't like real estate even, and they're not very happy people. This is for happy, well-adjusted, good people. We're going to provide you with that fertile ecosystem where you can farm by putting in the seeds to establish relationships. This is farming. It's not hunting. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. we have situations like Greg where he gets business right off the bat. Other people, they're establishing other types of relationships that improve their business. They're getting new real estate agents to join their firm. They're meeting vendors that can – enable them to service their clients better. Like if I need painters to come out to paint one of my listings and the the sale the the seller says I want three painters out tomorrow with three quotes. My competitors have a heart attack because they don't even know three painters. In my database I have 20 painters that come to my event. They'll come out in a New York minute because they want to please me. Why do they want to please me? Because I give, 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 and then I ask, and then I receive. But do you see the important part there? I'm giving, 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 giving. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to this and you're not a giver and you're only a taker, please don't call Nick and I. You're, you've already filtered yourself out. <laughs> this is for people like, like Greg that understand. You know, Greg is extremely happy with the business that he's gotten from this program. But he's also loving the fact that on the local level, people know who he is now. If he goes someplace, it's not just real estate agents that are recognizing him. It's potential buyers of homes, sellers of homes, builders, developers, flippers, painters, HVAC repair people, the people that make up our community. Uh, I'm going to let it back to you guys because I'm sort of dominating here. You can see I'm very passionate about this. That's why I created the program, because I want to create a movement of good people all across the United States. You guys are just lucky that I like real estate agents and pick <laughs> you to be in this program first. Well, we're all we're all honored. Let me tell you that. And then I, I want to I want to talk about something that <clears throat> that we haven't gone over yet. So what the reason why this is so easy for agents and why you guys are exploding so quickly, it's it's. It's all the front end. Yes, if you guys want to call yourselves air quotes, the roadies, go ahead, own the roadie, hashtag, hashtag real estate roadies. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I cracked myself up. I don't know why. Too far. Um, <laughs> too, far. too far. Too far. Too far, no. far with the hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I'm saying is that not only on the front end is this really easy for all of us real estate agents to implement, then comes the back end. This is the part that really sold me on doing this because, oh my God, the labor time intensive that I would have had to have done or my staff or my team members that I'd have done would never have worked. They would not have, Eileen would have shot me or cut my heart out with a spoon, one of the two. But they give a sign-in sheet that, you know, that you end pens and markers for name tags. Then they have a, a business card holder. Everyone puts their business cards in. If someone doesn't have a business card, they sign in, they put their email, phone number, name, address, the whole nine yards. You take those business cards, take the sign-up sheet, you fold them up, you put them in the self-addressed envelope back to North Carolina, where Rockstar Connect staff will then enter them into a spreadsheet, an ongoing running spreadsheet. And I'm not sure if you guys divide it up by event, but I know it's an, a master list at least. And then they can send that list to you so that you can then do follow-ups with the people that attended the networking events. So one of the things I'm doing, my net, as of this recording today, guys, uh, January 19th, 2018, my next event is next when, is next Wednesday, I believe. Yeah, the 23rd. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm when I go to the event, I'm going to collect all the information. I'm going to shoot it back to, you know, to Rockstar. 
when they're, they're going to send me a link, a link, a list just for that event. And I'm going to send a video that I'm going to record to each one of those to a, to a big you know, email list. And then I'm going to call or email each one of those people and hey, say, hey, I know we got a little bit of time to talk at the event, not a whole ton of time. Can I buy you a cup of coffee? Can we grab a bite to eat? You know, Matt and I switched over to EXP Real Estate, guys, and I, uh, I'm, well, welcome to my house. <laughs> this is where I live, eat, work, and sleep and everything else. Uh, and so getting out and be, being around other, you know, humanoids is a big part, a big thing that I need to start doing. Otherwise, I'm going to become the cat dad from hell. I'm never going to leave. Um, and be covered. Say, I'll, I'll be afraid, hacking up my own hairballs. Craig, I feel like you're becoming way more agoraphobic than you make fun of me for being. I, I actually yeah. kind of am. Yeah, but I'll, ha I'll right. have my own hairballs. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen, let, Stephen, let's talk about this because this is a this is a big question that comes up, which is that hey, I went to a networking event or I hosted a networking event. Now what do I do to follow up? And of course, you guys have made it. You know, you're greasing the wheels to make it easier to get the information that people need to follow up, which of course is an area that trips them up. But what do you, uh, you recommend that people do with the information? Well, a, a lot of a lot of this program goes on the basis that people have great intentions and then they don't do anything. Right. So we're hoping Greg McDaniel is going to do all those things he just promised to do, but we can't count on it for you to continue to have a successful event. So on our end, we're collecting all that data for you. So it's available for you when you need it, we're sending it, but we're using that data on your behalf. Mm -hmm. So we create an invitation database for you in North Carolina. So we're immediately reaching out on your behalf to the people that went to your event to thank them for coming and then inviting them back to the next event and encouraging them to spread information about Greg McDaniels and his business. Now, what should you do on your end? You should be doing all the things that Greg does. We're creating for you a Facebook page, for example, your own networking page. This is a place where you can share information from your business page, from your personal page, so people can understand what makes Greg McDaniel tick. I mean, we see him on the, these podcasts, but does he have a cat? How many houses did he sell this week? You know, et cetera. We want, this is a way that you can get information out about the type of person you are. Also, we want you to share your successes. We want you to go live at a closing and, and, and congratulate the new homeowner mm -hmm. on live videos so that the people in your network on Facebook can see what you're doing. Now, we're not slamming social media. If, if social media did not exist, we could not do our job as effectively as we do now. But we want you to maximize your social media so that you are a real live human being to your potential audience on social media. Does that make sense, guys? Does anyone yeah, want to add yeah. to that? Makes perfect, perfect, I just perfect wanted, sense. I just wanted to jump in and add one other thing too. Uh, you know, we also collect RSVPs across Eventbrite from all the different endpoints. Our automated marketing programs we work with are putting on local calendar listings and different websites in the local communities that we work with. And we also export that list to our hosts as well. So that's another email list that doubles or triples in size compared to the, the business cards even at times. So, you know, th that's just another way we help you build your sphere of influence and what we do with that data when we're sending out invitations on that end uh, countless times throughout the month for their future events. So Nick, go, go a little deeper on that. Explain exactly what you guys do to get the word out because it's not, it, it's pretty intensive. Yeah, well, there's, we have three different partners that our automated marketing tools across the internet. They basically will post our event, the Eventbrite event that we create to endpoints in all these different local communities. And that can be up to hundreds of different websites and calendar links in these local communities that aren't necessarily social media. They're, uh, you know, government run websites that have, you know, uh, activities going on in that community or their aggregated event sites that have the different events posted on them. These programs we partnered with will post those on your platforms and we also use a meetup group for every single client of ours where we're capturing people every single day on all of our programs that come in and see the meetup group that we've created for our clients. They'll join the group, they'll RSVP to the event and we're seeing a really good rate of people that say they're coming to the event on meetup that actually come. But just to touch on the question you were asking about the data collection, 
with the all of those different endpoints we post to through the Eventbrite event, they come back to the Eventbrite page and will RSVP and reserve a ticket to the event where mm -hmm. they're putting in their name, their email address, and some of their basic information. And what we're doing is we're give, offering that to our hosts as well. So if those people don't end up coming to the events, there's still people that could potentially be in your growing sphere of influence for future events or to reconnect with, like you said, send out a video to. So that's just another way that we help you grow your list even if those are people you haven't met yet, chances are they're going to come to one of your events. They went in and RSVP'd to your event. And even if they're not, it's their person you can reconnect with, grab a coffee with, have a phone call with, like all the things Greg said. So, you know, these are multiple different places that we're helping you grow the data management that really no one has the time to do all of that and still make a living. Yeah, it is, it is, it is incredible. People, people will show up to a free event with a ticket in hand. They're like, um, where do I hand this? I'm like, yeah. the garbage. You, you love responding to people with that. <laughs> it, That's it like is, your favorite it, line. You, you don't need that. <laughs> you don't need that. Just come in, Bubba. <laughs> come on, put the tag on. Let's have a cocktail together. You know, we've spoken about the roadies, and we've spoken about the audience, and we've spoken about uh, the talent, you know, our rock star hosts. What we haven't spoken about are the groupies. The groupies <laughs> are your raving fans. These are the people that go to the events. They think you are absolutely amazing. You are a rock god. I have people, and you know, all over the program, we have people that have maybe never even gone to the event, but they just appreciate that our hosts are doing good things for the community. They share everything I post. They engage with everything I do. They're promoting me just because I do good things. And those are the raving fans that we all talk about. How do you produce them? You produce them by creating an event that creates thousands and then tens of thousands and then hundreds of thousands and then millions of dollars for the community. The longer you stick with this, the more you'll grow. My events you know, into its uh, sixth year, I have a following on social media of 20,000 people in my local community that, that are seeing what I'm putting out. I have access to them in my database. I'm like the mayor, I'm like the mayor of my town. Mm -hmm. When I go places, people know who I am. And it's because of Rockstar Connect doing the hard labor. It's because of our great hosts that do a phenomenal job in their communities, creating community. Yeah, it really is. You get to meet a lot of people. I mean, uh, there are people that I don't think I've ever told you guys this, but um, I have a couple of the the people that attended the, the 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 networking events, and they literally hunt me down and hound me. When's the next event? When's the next event? When's the next event? I'm coming to the next event. When's the next event? I think it's the 19th. Are you sure? Because I, I don't want to miss it. Oh, it's the 23rd. Oh, thank God. And they want to take selfies with you. Yes, they do. Yeah, it's very surreal. I'm like, I just sell houses, man. How much did you? How much did you drink, sir? How much did you drink? Mm -hmm. Every one of the people in the program, they use that same word. They say it's surreal because people are coming up to them at the event and they're having their photos taken with them. Uh, mm -hmm. Local media is asking them to come on TV, radio, uh, do blog uh, posts. Uh, I mean, some people are, are going and they're going to like grocery store openings and cutting the ribbon because they become. <laughs> the local celebrity. And, and that makes me very pleased because that was what I wanted to do with this program. I wanted to give my clients local celebrity status. Now, when I started in real estate, I came from a completely different field, a different profession. I used this program to reinvent myself. I knew that with real estate agents, what are real estate agents doing to get their name out there? They're putting their face on a bus bench. Hey, I don't want anybody's ass on my face. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd rather have a party. <laughs> well, it depends on the kind of fetishes people are into. I'm, some people may be oh, into that. Right, Greg. God. Right. It could be. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You knew, you knew Greg was going there. And I was waiting for your response, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just I should have just muted Greg's microphone at that exact moment. That would have been perfect. Yeah, I was looking for the little red mark on the microphone. Yep. Oh, exactly. You, guys are, you, you, oh, you Nick, and Matt awesome. do not get to hang out on podcasts anymore. You guys think too much alike. <laughs> we both have to contend with you. That's what happens. <laughs> oh, now, Gene, I thought I was saying, Gene, did you have a question? You wanted to jump in here on something, right? The uh, the evil Volpinator. 
I posted that. Do <laughs> you like how I posted that in the feed on the Yes, it was great. Facebook I'm page? like, hmm, I think Gene has a question, which is why he told everyone else in the world on Facebook that he has a question. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I, I just I, – I'm going back. I mean, if you go back and we rewind the tape, you'll watch my face go through these iterations when they were talking about the alcohol at these parties. Okay. So I just – I need to dig in, and I have to understand this. Like, And this is for Stephen and Nick. What – I, and I, this is, I don't want to come out with my comments until I really understand this because I know it's going to end up backfiring on me. But what would be the reasons that states or localities or brokers or whatever it would be would have an issue with alcohol at a party that somebody else was running? Can you explain something in ex past experience? Well, for example, one of our major clients, they market themselves and they have 15 programs as a Christian company. Okay. So they don't. They, they are not against alcohol and people drinking alcohol, but they prefer that their agents in public do not drink alcohol. That being said, they're all okay for other people to do that. And people that do call us on the phone that work for companies like that, they just want to make certain that we're not booking this event as a, you know, a drinking fest or an orgy uh, or something like that. They want to have a business event. And it's very clear when you come to this event that it is a networking event. That being said, I did meet my wife at my networking event. What? And was there beer? Are you serious? <laughs> there was alcohol involved. Okay. All right. That's right. All right. I no, I, and I, you know, funny. I get that. I get that. I just, when it was going through my head, I'm thinking to myself, like if I was an agent, my broker was saying to me, you're throwing this event and I don't want there to be alcohol here. I'm like, look, if I, I know what the repercussions of me taking my pants off and running down the street are. Like, I'm 42, <laughs> right? And, and it's up to me whether or not I want to do that. So That's right. I, I just, Gina, I, I just, feel like you fully accept I, those consequences. I Absolutely. Think that, yeah. I think that if your broker is telling you how you conduct yourself as far as your choices about how you lead your life, you seriously need to be thinking about changing your brokerage. Mm. Okay. All right. Great That's transition. Kind of Speaking it's of like, that, Greg. Go. Come over to our EXP team. <laughs> that, Yo. Steven, you set it up for a layup. You threw, you threw Greg an alley oop. It was fantastic. God, that was Flatter. perfect. Yeah. And we didn't even rehearse that. High right five. Now. Air five. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, seriously, Matt and I switched over to EXP Realty. Uh, we we're super, super excited to uh, to be a part of this this incredibly awesome and you know exploding family uh, across the country and in Canada, guys. <clears throat> Go to bookmcdaniel.com. Um, I'll put it in the chat. So bookmcdaniel.com. Book 30 minutes with me, guys. Let's see if joining EXP is the right fit for you. Um, the reason why Matt and I did it is that we're seeing the world of real estate radically change. Uh, and we're seeing brick and mortar starting to phase out. There will always be a place for it, but starting to phase out. And people like myself, I am probably 10 times more effective by sitting in my home office and working here because there's zero uh, distractions. If I want to go talk to another agent, I can go to the Cloud University. There's 55 classes every single month on what, what you know, how to do real estate and how to do tech. Um, guys, there's there's three streams of income with EXP: your typical commissions, the commissions from the team that you build, and then the stock that you acquire from just doing the deals, putting people on your team, buying stock. You know, out of you can buy five percent uh, of every one of your checks you you cash can go directly to be purchasing stock at the end of every single month. So it's literally automatic wealth building for you at the end of the day because if you don't have a, a, a contract an escrow, in, in escrow right now, you are out of business if you don't have one and you're only you're as good as your last point. deal. You have no 401ks and all of his agents are staring straight at the ground going buyer, seller, buyer, seller, shit, that, uh, that seller sucks, that buyer sucks, oh my God, it blew up. Now I have no money. But wealth building and being able to expand your reach to all the agents you know around the world, well, it's gonna get, get to the world, but right now it's around the country and, and into Canada, guys. I Book the time with me. Look, if it's good for you, sweetness. If it's not, sweetness. Either way, keep watching the podcast, but we would love to show you guys how we can just make, make a metric shit ton of money. And Matt, quickly go over the added on value benefits that our team has that on top of what EXP is already giving everybody. Right. 
Right. So when you come on to our team specifically, you start out with 36 to life, which uh, which Greg co-teaches. He's teaching his first session with Hank right now. So you get that for absolutely free. Then you go into uh, you get free instant access to everything we've ever built or ever will build. But mostly go right from 36 to life into Rockstar Conversations, which is our signature program that we put together. It's a simple four step marketing plan to get you started. And you start with the people who already know, like and trust you and then radiate out from there. Uh, we also there, there's a bunch of other benefits coming, including live of training uh, so you you'll be able to watch our weekly rockstar agent mastermind that we've been kind of doing behind the scenes we're going to open that up to the members of our team so that they can join in and participate and watch uh, watch us coach five agents one-on-one -on -one and get all the benefits of the systems and the programs that we build for them <clears throat> as well as uh, all of Jeff Cohn's live training elite real estate systems live stream program uh, that would um, uh, deliver high def video training on scripts, dialogues, and a whole host of other topics every Wednesday and Friday. So just on our team, just alone, forgetting all the stuff that eXp itself produces, you get three times a week high def video training on how to actually grow your real estate business and turn it into a, uh, a real wealth building vehicle. So let's yeah. put it that way. That's a small sampling. Yeah, a small sampling. Also, guys, my family owns the uh, the um, the patent to predictive analytics. We are in our beta right now nationwide. We've seen phenomenal numbers in every county and state that it it works in. You will get. We are Matt and I are working with uh, Likely AI, the company over there, to uh, develop a discount, a package just for the people on either the McDaniel Callahan team or the McDaniel Real Estate team, our two teams. Um, you guys will have some, an offer that no one else has. And we're going to encourage you strongly to work with you know, Rockstar Connect here uh, so that we can show you how to leverage them and the leads and everything else that we'll be doing. So there it is, guys. Go to bookmcdaniel.com. I'll put it in right now. But book your time. Guys, we, we, we are not going to take every human being out there. We are taking you know the people who want to grow a business. So right. there it is. Remarkably, the same type of people that Stephen and Nick, you guys would like to work with, who want to work with good people. So Stephen, uh, if if they are good people and they want to help other people and they want to meet them face to face and build uh, build themselves up as kind of the mayor, the local celebrity in their city, what is their next step with you guys? Well, uh, they can uh, simply go to our website, uh, rockstarconnect.com. They can access uh, access us there. Our phone number is there. Uh, they can also go to our business page on Facebook, where you can see the type of social media that we are doing for our rock stars. Uh, on a daily basis, you can see photos of events. But we're always available to discuss whether you're appropriate for the program. We'd love to set up an interview with you so you can start the application process. Very Nick, cool. do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, on our website, there's a contact section, and as you mentioned, with a form, and you can fill it out. Just let us know the city you're in and any comment, and then that goes straight to us and our team, and we'll be able to deal with it from there. Perfect. All right, and then Gene, same question for you. I don't want to talk to nobody this week. Don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> a true marketer at heart. Says, I don't want to talk to I'm not going to be back on the books until Tuesday because I told you I'm going to that I came yes. on Sunday night. So That's Tuesday, right. So Tuesday, don't call Tuesday, Gene. Tuesday, or Al. GeneGolby.com. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed that. I know how much I've missed that. <laughs> you were supposed to get me a jingle, McDaniel. Oh, I, I blew that one, didn't I? Whoops. Yes, you did. Oh, my God, you guys. All right. This has been a lot of fun. We do need to wrap a nice, tidy little bow on this one. Uh, as, as far as the podcast itself, make sure to subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or Stitcher, depending on whether you want video or audio versions. Guys, we appreciate you sharing the show. We love that you guys share the show, whether it's with your fellow agents, your broker, whatever the case is. Uh, we appreciate that you guys are sharing it and enjoying it, watching it. Make sure to uh, go uh, connect with Greg on Facebook. Follow him. That way you get notified when we are live. We are live now, the same consistent time schedule, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific, right here on Facebook. Just follow Greg's personal profile to get that, or you can go to Real Estate Uncensored, our business page, and get that there too. Uh, but, yeah, let's, uh, let's close this one out, Greg. All right, Matt. You guys, as always, Matt and I have a deep love infatuation with you guys. Anyone who is a, a, a hunter of knowledge and, and striving to be a better version of you in 365 days and you're continually chasing you know, that better version because you're never going to catch them because you're never going to be you know, the best you can ever be. And that's the best part about it. And education is the way to get there. Thank you for watching this, guys. It really means the world to us. Matt and I are and always have been wanting to be the Robin Hood of real estate. We want to take from the rich, give to the needy at no cost. So that's what this show does, guys. All right, man. Well, no. You know what, Matt? What should we do? Peace out, ninjas. We gone.